Church, how are we doing today? There you go. I love, I love Sundays. Can I be honest? I love Sundays. I, I, I get excited on Sunday mornings. Um, I wake up. Uh, today, my, my daughter, Tiger, woke me up, you know, knee to the nose. That's how I woke up this morning. I was like, God, is that you? I was like, I can feel it. <laughs> um, but I'm excited. If this is your first time, welcome. Know that uh, we're excited that you're here. We're excited to get to know you. You saw on the screen, there's a lot of different ways of how we do community. And uh, I would encourage you to take that leap of faith. Today is your day. Say, all right, Lord, I'm going to do it. I'm going to step into it. And everybody say next Sunday. Next Sunday is a special Sunday. It's Vision Sunday. How many of you guys are excited for Vision Sunday? There you go. We love, we love Vision Sunday. We, we're going to get a vision. We're going to talk about the final quarter of the year, some pretty big announcements that we have for our church, and I can't wait. Uh, I, could, I, could, I could tell y'all today, but today's not Vision Sunday. Um, I could, because I know it's not like we're trying to figure out the announcements, but I, you know, let's just build the anticipation for next Sunday. It's gonna be, it's gonna be an amazing time. So invite a friend. Uh, we're gonna have good coffee, good community, and uh, and Jesus is gonna be here. It's gonna be amazing. Um, open up your Bibles with me to the book of Genesis, chapter one, verse twenty-eight. It'll be on the screen as well. Today, I want to conclude a uh, collection of messages around the life of David. And the subtitle for this collection of messages, collection is just our language for a series of messages around the same topic. And um, the, the subtitle for it was Marked for Greatness. Marked for Greatness. And we spoke about how we have been called for greatness. Um, but a lot of us, it took us five weeks to even realize that we are called for greatness. Because maybe what we see with our eyes does not match what we've heard in our spirit. And, and, and that can be a, a big frustration. When a pastor tells you every week, oh my God, you're called to do great things, but you just feel like you're stuck. I don't know if that's just me. But sometimes God speaks to us in our spirit and we just don't see it with our eyes. Well, today I want to I, I speak to you um, through the scripture about how to unlock um, this greatness and enter into what I believe God has for you uh, because God has a very blessed life for you and this isn't like hey money in your pocket well I pray that you know if you need money um, just tell the person next to you hey let me borrow 20 bucks um, they'll give them to you ask Abraham he'll definitely give them to you put them on the spot <laughs> some of you are like oh, for real <laughs> y'all sat in the wrong section <laughs> Um, but today we're going to speak on that for a second. But I want to start with this verse in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. And this will be the foundation of today's message. I'll give you my title. We'll pray. Then we'll do a message. And then um, today, if you speak Spanish or you would like to speak Spanish, we invite you to come through. One of my great friends has come. It's going to be an amazing time. But let's get into the word. Genesis chapter 1, 28. The Bible says, so God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. And then God blessed them. Everybody say, God blessed them. So I love it. He created them. And then right after, he's like, all right, now that you're here, I'm just going to bless you. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. He created them, and then God blessed them. Let me, let me give you my title for today's message. It's simply this, Access Your Blessings. Access Your Blessings. Let's pray one more time. We can't overpray. Close your eyes. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would speak to us. We never come to hear from man. We come to hear from you. So we open up our hearts and our minds. Lord, we want to focus. We focus on what we want to receive. Lord, I pray that today you would give us a word that would give us the courage and the boldness to step in, to step into greatness, to step out of average. Lord, we are sons and daughters of the King of Kings, the one who created the universe the one who spoke the mountains and the seas into existence, the one who is aligning our lives for his divine purpose. So today, Lord, I pray that we would recognize that we are your children. So Lord, I pray today that we would 
we would learn how to unlock and access the blessings that you have for us. And we thank you and we pray for the person to our left and to our right. Lord, thank you for making them so attractive. Lord, bless them. Hey, Jesus, I mean, if you believe that, come on, say amen, clap one more time. All good. All right. Um, I want to I want to I want to share something with you a little bit about us I feel like every Sunday I share stories you guys are getting to know uh, us a little bit and, um, and when I say us I mean my wife um, and, and I ask I always ask for permission before I tell stories but I like to preach from my life when you preach you talk about your life you know what I'm saying like it is it is what it is but this is all I know uh, my wife Crystal one of her favorite hobbies I don't know if you can relate is to clean. Who, who, who loves an organized life? Okay, there you go. Like, you just, for fun, like, what are we doing? We, we're going to vacuum. I'm like, oh, that's fun. That's cool. I love that, too. That's totally not my love language. You know, opposites attract, then they attack. No, but I'm just saying, no, they just, but first, fo focus on the attraction. It's great. I love it. Without, without, without Chris in my life, man, I'd be a mess. Already, you see me, you're like, come on, you know. Uh, but imagine. And uh, I, I love, we, we spend, uh, we spend uh, time always cleaning up the house. We love it. We do spring cleaning, then we do summer cleaning, then fall cleaning. And then just because it's Thursday, you know, we clean. It's a great time. And now I'm seeing uh, my daughter. My daughter is getting into it. Not, not a lot. You know, we're not going to be those parents. Oh, my daughter cleans. No, because we make her clean. You know what I mean? We say, you, you want to eat? You got to clean. That's just, you got to earn your keep. Um, all the parents know the struggle. A lot of you without, without kids are judging me. When I have kids, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. Like, got to earn their keep. And um, they were cleaning out the car, and, and my, my daughter Lux, she was going through the, the little pockets in the car, and she found her phone. Why does a five-year-old have a phone? I don't know. That beats me. I didn't have a phone until I was in college, and it looked like a brick. You know, you could play snake, and that's all you could do. I'm aging myself, I know. And uh, she found her phone. Now, the cool thing about her phone is that she had lost it for a while. Now, again, into the people who don't have devices, uh, don't have children. Some of you are saying, when I have a child, oh, my child is not going to play with a tablet. Again, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. You know what I mean? Because if you take away the phone, you have to entertain the kid for like multiple hours. It's exhausting. Thank God for YouTube kids. Can I get an amen, parents? Thank God for Blippi. Can I, thank God for Coco. Man. I'm just kidding. Like, what? Wow. Not sponsored. And uh, she found her phone, and it, was, and it was cool. She had lost it for a while, and she got, as soon as she lost it, I remember it was, it was a couple months back, we looked for it like crazy, right? Because you're like, man, like, this is a valuable thing. She uses it a lot. We got, we got to find this thing. And, and, and we were looking around. We couldn't find it. And after a few weeks, we kind of gave up on looking for it. We just, we just gave up. We're like, we lost the phone. It is what it is. You can use ours. But then when she found it, can I tell you, like, it changed our lives for the better. <laughs> she found this old phone with a cracked screen, but it was like we gave her a brand new phone. It was like an amazing thing that she found. It was like a brand new, like, she was like, oh, my God, is it Christmas? Like, no, you just lost your things, and now you found your things. Now, she owned the phone, but because she couldn't find it, she wasn't enjoying it. Now, let me tell you, there's a big difference in having a blessing and enjoying a blessing. How many blessings do you have in your life that you're not enjoying because you've lost access to the things that God has given you in your life? Like, you've been blessed, but you're not enjoying your blessing. We were talking about a great life. What does it mean to live a great life? Can I tell you what it means to live a great life? For me, in this season of my life, to live a great life is to live a life where you are enjoying the blessings that God gives you. A lot of you are blessed. I know that. You know that. But you're still going through a season of anxiety. You're still struggling with identity issues. You're still struggling with feeling like you're isolated. Why? Because having a blessing doesn't mean you are enjoying the blessing. Because we don't have access to it. There's a big difference in knowing that you have something and being able to enjoy it. Now, what I love about this verse is that we read in Genesis chapter 1 is that when God created Adam and Eve, he created them in verse 27. And in verse 28, he says, I'm going to bless them. The first thing that God does when he enters relationship with you is not ask you to do anything. He first blesses you. 
If this is your first time coming to a church, if this is your first year saying, okay, I'm with Jesus, now what? You know what comes first? Before the work, before the exhaustion, before getting your life right, before, you know, getting everything in order again, God wants to bless you. In fact, this is what I want to present to you. Before you can start your path of greatness and your calling, God puts in a prerequisite of you enjoying your blessings. Why? Because a lot of us, we say, okay, I want to have validation from my boss, therefore I will work. But with validation from God doesn't come from your performance as much as it comes from your enjoyment. Religion is about what you do. Relationship is about what you enjoy. Have you ever been with around people that you love so much and you don't do anything but it's the best time? And then with people that are just an acquaintance, you're stressed out. What are we going to do? Like, are they going to judge me if they don't like the restaurant? Are they going to judge me if I don't dress right? But then your homies come through and you're like, bro, like, come in, get out. I don't care. Like, this is what you're watching if you don't like it. Why? Because it's about enjoyment. When there's intimacy, you can enjoy the relationship. But only you can choose to access your blessings. No one else can use your blessings. There's a lot of people that wish they had the life that you have that you're complaining about right now. Can we put our life into perspective right now? Absolutely. You're complaining about your car. Someone's just praying for a car. You're complaining about your apartment. Someone's just praying for a place to sleep tonight. You're complaining about your toxic friends. Well, yeah, that's your problem. Ain't nobody want no toxic friends. But only you can access the blessings that God has for you. Nobody else. Only you can get a better view of what God has already blessed you with. I, I love the technology and the phones right now that they open, they unlock with your face. You know what I'm saying? Like you put, you, you point it to someone's face and they see the face and it opens up. It's like magic. I, I want to present to you that your blessings unlock the same way with, with face recognition. Like there are blessings that only you can unlock. You can't come and say, Pastor, I cannot enjoy my marriage. Well, I, I can't get into your home and make you enjoy it. Only you can do that. Lord, I have kids, but I'm having the worst time of my life right now. I'm struggling. I feel like a bad parent. I feel like a bad friend. I cannot enjoy your blessings for you. Only you can choose to get a godly perspective about your life so that you can have access to the blessings that God has for you. And then when you, when you, when you access those blessings, let me tell you, that is where the fun begins. When you, when you become a Christian, I know we sometimes make it seem about what we do and about what we accomplish. But let me tell you, John 10.10, 10, the Bible says the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come to give you life and life to the fullest. We have a God that wants you to have a full life, an abundant life. A life full of friends, a life full of peace, a life full of joy, a life not just full of success, but significance. But God says you need to have access to the things that he's already provided for you. Some of you, how many blessings you've forgotten about that you're not enjoying at the moment? Some of the things that you have in your life, in your heart, some of the people that you have on your phone that sometimes you see them like, oh my God, like, yeah, like, we are friends, huh? Like, why am I, why am I so alone? God says you need to access the blessings that God has given you. Today I'm going to challenge you to, to have some access, but we're going to talk about how we're going to access these blessings. I'm going to give you three quick thoughts about understanding the blessings that you have and, and, and how you can access them. And I want you to write this down. The first thought is this. Blessings are both an inheritance and an instruction. Yeah. Blessings are both an inheritance and an instruction. Okay, so um, I have two kids, my wife and I and, and, and the kids. We call ourselves the team. We're the team. Wherever we go, we're like, is this a team trip or a daddy-daughter trip or a mom and the kids trip? But when it's all together, we're the team. We say, this is the dream team. I pray that the dream team is the people that are in your home. I pray that you get to love the people that God has brought you. I know that you're kind to, like, your coworkers. I know that you're amazing with people at church. But can I tell you, don't do that and, and, and leave out the people that God has assigned you to be your dream team. Don't, don't make them skip out because you're amazing at church, but you're horrible at home. Don't win at work and lose at home, okay? So we are the team. And as a team, we have a culture. We have rules. Now, the rules in our life are basically things that they got caught up doing, and now we have anti-rules. So before we go anywhere, we're like, okay, Lux, like, what's the rules? Like, don't bite. <laughs> don't kick. 
And then the original rules, like as, as, a, as a team, we say, you know, we're Camachos, we're kind, we're generous, we're friends. Like we go over the rules before we go to someone's house, before we go, what's the rules? We're kind, we're friends, we don't bite. I know we don't bite, Tiger. Tiger, we don't bite. And we have rules. Now, they're part of the team. They didn't have to sign up. They didn't have to audition. Just because they were born into our family, they're part of our team. They inherited their identity, but there's also instructions to behave as part of the team. There's a culture. Okay, I get it. Have you ever met people that are more family than your family because your family is a relative? The Bible says that a friend is closer than a brother in time of need. Right? There is, there is instructions that come with relationships. There are standards that are that are built. Now, when you become a follower of Jesus, there's an inheritance that is given to you. The moment you say yes to Jesus, you inherit, inherit eternal life, forgiveness of sins. All of a sudden, Jesus is your Lord and Savior. You believe that he took your place at the cross and you're enjoying life. There's life to the fullest. That is available, but there are instructions that you need to follow in order to access those blessings. Is that making sense? A lot of us can access blessings because we're horrible at following instructions. Not just me. I know that. Some of you, Ikea, I don't need this. <laughs> what? Instructions? What? <laughs> like you're lost. Like you're lost. Like you're lost. You're driving. You're lost. But you're like, babe, ask for directions. No, no, no. I got the Holy Ghost in me. I don't need directions. I'm, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a leader. <laughs> We, we struggle with instructions. A lot of us can't access blessings because we don't, we don't want to follow the instructions. We, we get a makeshift version of what it was meant to be. Um, going back to my wife's passion of cleaning, um, I, I want to take you in a little more intimate space. Uh, uh, for a while, I knew that I had to organize my closet, okay? I'm just going to put myself out there. Today is about authenticity. I, I, I struggle with it. I struggle with the organization. I, I look at all the shirts and I'm like, well, you know, I can find it. Like, it's all good. I have a system. Like, don't mess with my mess. Can I get an amen? Like, don't mess with my mess. <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, don't mess with my mess. It's messy, but it's a divine mess. Like, you, you, you'd open up my closet and be like, how do you find your stuff? I'm like, it's called divine intuition. God gave me a vision. I'm going to find it. And I knew that I had to clean up my clean up and organize my closet. I knew that. I knew that I was struggling so bad. And then, uh, you know, I went on a trip. I came back and I opened the closet and it was all organized. And I was like, did I do that? Like, <laughs> did, did I do that? Did I wake up at night? And did I, did an angel visit me? <laughs> like, is this you God? No, my wife organized my closet. Um, love you, babe. Um, she organized my closet and I saw it and I caught a vision. I'm like, oh my God, like, I didn't know it could be this nice. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know if you remember Pimp My Ride. It was like, Pimp My Closet. I was like, oh my God, like, that's my closet? Like, like everything's like color coordinated. And like, there was shoes I forgot I had. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh my God, I have so many pairs for Air Force Ones. Like, why do I have so many pairs? Like, what is this? Get rid of this. And it was amazing. And since she organized it, can I tell you, it stayed organized. It stayed like that. Why? Because I saw now, oh my God, like, life is better when it's not unorganized. A, a lot of us can't enjoy our relationships because they're so unorganized. A lot of us have unorganized finance, financial life. Like you got money, but you're like, where did it go? <laughs> you're like, I know I got paid, but like who, who took my check? All the subscriptions that you're not using took your money. All of those times, instead of budgeting, you're just throwing it away at Chili's. You're like, I got you two for 25, but then you go extra. You're unorganized. And you're like, God bless me. And he says, you inherited the blessing, but there are instructions to your blessing. Yeah. There is a process of you being a good steward of what he's already given you. It's called being faithful in the little so you could be ruler over much. God, give me friends. I gave you one. And you're like, I know, but she's weird. I know, but you're weird too. God used me in a great way. God called me. They put like five slides of how you can get involved and you're still praying, I want community. You get from community what you contribute into community. You get from the church what you put into the church. 
It is a concept called you reap what you sow. Stop expecting fruit from places where you haven't sown seed. You're like, all right, God, bless me financially, but we don't sacrifice financially. God, Lord, bless, bless me relationally, but we don't bless relationally. We don't sow. God is saying, you got to follow the instructions. Now, the Bible, this book right here, well, it's, it's, it's on my iPad, but like just pretend, like use your holy imagination. This is a manual. This is instructions for your life. And there's certain things that are for all of us, right? Like, 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 like the Bible says, hey, honor your God with your purpose. And you're like, got it. I have a purpose. I'm a Christian. I'm called. But it's specific for you. you got to be obedient with the instructions that he gave you. For some of you, it's like Crystal was saying, to start a business, to start a blog, to have conversations with your boss, to go back to school and get your degree so you can get your promotion. you got to be obedient with the specific instruction that God gave you. This book also says, love your neighbor. And you're like, I love my neighbor. I know you do. Like in concept, and idea, you love your neighbor. You're here, you're like, I love you guys. I know. But God, for some of you, is giving you very specific instructions. Like today, hey, today you pay for the check. You're like, that's the devil. God is saying, hey, you know what, I, I want you to send a text, an encouraging text to someone. Specific instructions, because God wants to use you. God wants to partner with you, but you've got to follow the instructions. Yes, it's an inheritance, but it's also an instruction. This is, this is what I want to pray over your life, that you would look into the word of God and pray that God gives you instructions for today. Instructions for right now so that you can unlock the blessings that are already in your life. Clap like you know. Okay, God, I'm going to follow some instructions. I'm going to listen. I'm going to be a good steward. The second thing that I want you to understand is that blessings begin in community. Blessings begin in communion. Blessings begin in communion. Have you ever met someone that goes too deep too fast? They ask you like very private conversations questions and you're like, who, what, who are you? Um, you go to church and, you know, here we, we, we love to welcome people. That's our culture. That's like house rules, right? So when you come into, into this house, um, 10 people are going to chase you. They're going to want to, like, shake your hand. They want to high-five you and you're like, oh, I'm COVID. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what? <laughs> Just get away from me. And uh, those are house rules, right? We, 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 uh, we, we, we love on people. Um, it, it begins in... Communion. But there are people that you meet, and for the first time, uh, they ask you very, uh, very deep questions about your life. Hey, how's it going? What's your name? Oh, man, my name's Tony. Hey, man, nice to meet you, Tony. Hey, how long have you been single, bro? It's like, what? what, what? <laughs> hey, man, welcome to church. Hey, what's your credit score, bro? I'm looking for someone to co-sign. Like, what are, you, what are you talking about? <laughs> Intimate conversations, right? And so what, what do you say? It's like, bro, I don't even know you like that. Like, girl, like, relax. I don't really know you to get into those details right now. A lot of us, we want detailed instructions from a God that we have no intimacy with. We're like, God, like, just tell me. Like, I don't really know you. I don't really want to be known by you. But I just, I just want the secrets without the relationship. You are what I call a friend with benefits. I get the benefits of purpose, but uh, I'm too busy right now to have a relationship. So can we just get to the thing where I can, like, withdraw from the spiritual ATM? Can I just, like, like I know pastor said, here's the code. It's like prayer, fasting. Um, I, I got it. I get it. I'm pressing the code. And you're trying to withdraw, but you can only withdraw from an account where you have actually deposited in the first time. So we want instructions from a God and we have no intimacy with this God. Blessings begin in communion. Let me explain to you what this means. In the beginning, we saw in Genesis that God creates Adam and Eve, and he breathes life into him. God's spirit gets inside Adam. That is communion. God is living inside of him, and then he says, now go and be blessed. There is always communion before there are blessings. Uh, there's always has to be an intimacy and conversations and questions and answer because this is what God shows us that there's got to be communion first before there can be communication. Where there is communion, communication is 
built. Have you ever found yourself in a season where God places you? Maybe you've been at local church for a few weeks, a few months, and you're meeting a lot of new people, and, and you're trying to find some friends. You're trying to look for some friends, but you like baby step yourself into conversations because you don't really know if you can trust them. You're like, I don't know if they can handle me, so I'm going to see how much I can tell them without them actually canceling me. You know what I'm saying? You're like, how, how much can I trust them with? Like, so you show up to church and you meet people and, um, and, you're, and you're giving the best version of yourself, but not the real version because you're afraid of being judged. I've done that a lot. Like, I meet, I meet with people and for the first time and like, oh, tell me about your life. I'm like, oh, no, man, I, just, I pray every day. Um, only, you know, my kids only watch Veggie Tales. Then little, then little by little, they begin, they begin to show me things about their life, and we start building a trust, and what I say begins to change. Hey, what shows are you watching? Oh, you too? Oh, that's awesome. And then you get into it. Hey, hey, what's your favorite restaurants? Oh, my God. And like, have you ever been to this place? And have you ever done so-and-so? And then you begin to open up your soul because intimacy takes time. It takes time. How do we build how do we build com com intimacy with God? We communicate with God little by little. We open up our word little by little every day. Okay, God, say something to me. Hey, when we pray, we, we just open up our mouth and we begin to speak with God. And we say, okay, God, here's, here's who I am. This is my life. I'm trusting you. And you begin to build an intimacy with God. It takes, absolutely, it takes time. So we begin to communicate with God. Um, I, I, I want to say this um, from the bottom of my heart, that a lot of us, we know that we have faith in God, but God's calling us into deeper than that. God is calling us into a friendship with the Holy Spirit. God is calling us to a friendship with the Holy Spirit. God is saying, I want you to go from faith into friendship. Not a friendship that is over familiar, but a friendship where trust is the foundation of the relationship. Now, a lot of us will never access the blessings because we never access intimacy with God. We'll never access a friendship with God. And you're saying, okay, God, I can build friends with people, but I don't know if I can be friends with God. I don't know if I can, why? Because I don't think that God would want to be friends with me. Have you ever seen a group of people and you're like, oh, those are the cool girls, I don't know if they want to be friends with me. All those are the cool guys. I don't know if they could be friends with me. All those are the leaders. All those are the bosses. Those are the managers. Those are the ones that have been here for a while. And you know yourself. And the imposter syndrome kicks in and you're saying, I just don't know. I just don't know if they could handle me. I just don't know if they could see me and value me and know me. I just, I just don't know. That is called religion. This is what religion says. You, you got to get your life right and then Jesus will draw near. But Jesus says... Uh, I want you to accept the fact that I've drawn near and I'm going to help you get your life right. It's a big difference. There's such a big change. Religious people don't really like this message. Can I be honest with you? They, 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 don't, want, they don't want you to think that anyone can have access to Jesus. They don't want you to think that anyone can have communion with Jesus. They, they, don't, want us to, they don't want us to believe that we can have communion with Jesus. And you know what I love to remind them? I love to remind them about the crucifixion of Jesus. And this is, this, is, this, this is a thing that kills a lot of religious leaders. That it wasn't sinners and hypocrites that put Jesus on the cross. It was the church leaders that put Jesus on the cross. It wasn't the drunk people, the, 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 the prostitutes and the tax collectors that voted in for Jesus to be crucified. But in fact, it was the leaders of the church that couldn't handle the fact that there was God personified that was doing away with all the religion of the time. And what I love about the crucifixion is that Jesus is being crucified in the middle of two thieves, between two notorious sinners. And at that moment, Jesus is having a conversation. In other words, he's having communion with a sinner that is being murdered, killed for his life. Let me tell you, this man never did a good thing. He was crucified. This thief was a notorious sinner. And at that moment, he had communion with Jesus. His greatest pain is what God used to lead him into his greatest encounter. 
He had time in a conversation, face-to-face -face time with Jesus. Don't tell me that sinners can't get time with Jesus. Don't tell me that people that the world calls sinners and wants to crucify for their life will not get time with Jesus. Jesus didn't come to be a friend with those who think they're saints. Jesus came to be a friend with those who know that they are sinners. There's two types of people in the church. Those who think they're saints and those who know they're sinners. Those who think they're saints are looking at Jesus from a distance because they know if I get up close, he's going to call out all the flaws in my life. But when you know you're a sinner, you're like, I pray that this cross, this pain, this lifestyle will lead me to a moment where Jesus can come near at his worst time, the best thing, step into his life. At his worst moment, at his lowest moment, Jesus showed up. Can I tell you, it's the same thing in your life. It is when you feel, I don't deserve the blessing, I don't deserve the call, I'm not good enough. That moment God says, uh, 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 you're ready for me now. It's funny how God shows up almost when we think it's too late. Have you ever been in that place? Like, I feel like it's too late. Then God shows up. I feel like there's no hope because... Usually this is what happens when you're in trouble. You call your friends, you call your leaders, you call your boss, you go on social media, you go on rants, you gossip. And then once everything fails, you're like, all right, I guess we can pray now. <laughs> and God is saying, um, even when you're done with me, I'm just not done with you. Even when you use me as a last resort, he says, I still want to show up. That's how much he loves you. Because he wants to have communion with you. And I know that sometimes we spend our lives running away from where we know God is calling us. But God is saying, if you run, I want to run with you. If you want to hide, I want to hide with you. Because God wants to bless you, but he knows before I can give you a blessing, i got to have communion with you. I need to spend time with you. And the last thing I want to tell you is just simply this, that only I can decide to access my blessings. Only I can decide to access my blessings. No one else can access my blessings for me. No one else has my face. No one else has my password. Only I can decide to access my blessings. It takes commitment. Everybody say commitment. commitment. Everybody's like, no, that's a cuss word. I don't cuss at church. No. Commitment. A lot of us can I tell you the reason why we're not stepping into God's life for us is because we're afraid of commitment. It takes commitment. I, I, did, a, I did a wedding recently. I love doing weddings. And... Um, when it gets to the vows, it's like, it's like this holy moment, right? Do you take her to be lawfully wedded wife, sickness or in health, better or for worse? And I do. And then it's like these big statements, right? And I'm like, and do you, and do you vow to be faithful and take no other? And imagine at that time, you're getting married. And they ask your partner, hey, do you promise to remain faithful? forsake all others until the end, and they say, I'll try. I'll, tr I'll try my best. It'll be like, like scratch, you know what I'm saying? And do you promise to be faithful, forsake all others, and be the best for each other until the end? You know what, 90% for sure can give you 90%. That's an A somewhere, A minus, but that's still an A. Would you marry that person? Absolutely not. Because if you're not committed, why am I going to give you my best? If you're not committed, like, why am I going to give you access into what's the most intimate parts of my life? A lot of us, we, we want access to the best, but we're saying, but we're not committed. We're just not committed. I know that we're in a world where we're like, just whatever, be relaxed, and we go for whatever is easy. But God is saying, it's going to require some commitment from your part. It's going to require for you to decide to say, this is my life from here on now. It takes a commitment. If you don't commit to God, doesn't mean that he's not going to bless you. It just means that you will not be able to access those blessings. You'll be like my five-year-old. God will bless you and you will lose it because you're not committed. And because you don't have access, you just, you just give up on it. You just give up on it. God says take, it takes commitment. How do you build commitment? You have to decide to be committed. When you're taking those vows, do you forsake all others? You say, yes, absolutely. 
Does it mean things are going to be perfect? No, but it means that you begin with a commitment and you invite God to help you to stay committed to those promises. And, and a lot of people don't understand what, what making a decision means, and I love this topic. Incision means to cut in. Circumcision means to cut around. Decision means to cut out. You don't make a decision for the things of God until you cut out the things of the world. You don't make a decision for God's best until you cut out the offers of the people in your life. Some of you are just a decision away to close some doors so that God can open the door that is for you. You have too many options and you treat your life and your calling as an option. You're like, okay, when I'm done with like living my life and having fun and like trying my thing and doing it my way, then I'll commit. And God is saying, by then it could be just too late. God says, I need you to commit to what? To you, to your call, to what God has for your life. God is looking for people to say, I want what God has for me. And God says, well, commit to me. I, I know that that sounds like a little bit too pushy, but can I tell you, in today's day and age, we can't play around anymore. Can't mess around. Can't do it halfway. He's either Lord of all or not at all. And that rhymes so you know it's real. It's, it is what it is, can I tell you. You don't enjoy Christianity until you commit to Jesus. You don't enjoy the blessings that God gives you until you commit to Jesus. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet with me today.